Have scientists now found evidence of life on Venus? A shocking discovery on Venus that the Soviets kept hidden until now suggests just that. We may have been overlooking something important for decades and looking for life in all the wrong places in the universe. Venus is the brightest planet in the sky and can be seen with the naked eye both in the morning and in the evening. Although it shines so brightly and almost glows like a star in the sky, astronomers paid almost no attention to it. Venus had been forgotten while everyone looked excitedly at Mars, where dozens of probes and rovers from many countries are on their way. Its diameter is around 12,104 kilometers, making it slightly smaller than our home planet, and yet the two planets are very similar. This fact also gave researchers an exciting idea. Venus could once have been even more similar to Earth. This assumption proved to be true in the laboratory in a way that will amaze you. Computer simulations have shown that around 700 million years ago, Venus was a watery world with an atmosphere and possibly life. Today, Venus has a very dense atmosphere consisting mainly of carbon dioxide. This is linked to an extreme greenhouse effect and temperatures of up to 460 degrees Celsius on the surface. The frightening thing is that Venus could have undergone a transformation similar to our current problems. A cold shiver runs down your spine at the thought that our world could be well on the way to becoming a hellishly hot and barren furnace like Venus. Dense clouds barely allow a glimpse of the planet. Calculations have shown that the Venusian clouds spread rain of corrosive sulfuric acid across the planet. It's hard to imagine that life could have existed there, but it's very likely as researchers even found possible remains of these life forms in 2020. The biomarker phosphine was discovered in the atmosphere of Venus. Phosphine is normally associated with biological processes on Earth, and there is no known abiotic source on Venus that could produce phosphine in the quantities detected. If there are bacteria on Venus, it's also likely that complex life once existed here. What conditions are needed for life to develop? Phosphine is not directly a building block of life. Rather, the gas is produced by living organisms, namely bacteria. On Earth, the gas occurs almost exclusively as a byproduct of the metabolism of certain types of microbes. As we all know, bacteria are the original form of life. Billions of years ago, there were nothing more than tiny single-celled organisms on Earth. So far, no one knows where they came from or how they came to Earth. Before the oceans formed or water even appeared on the planet, Earth was a similarly inhospitable place as Venus is today hot, corrosive, and hostile to life. But then, the planet cooled down, water appeared, and life developed. To this day, it is a hotly debated and ultimately unresolved issue where all the water that fills our oceans, rivers, and lakes today suddenly came from. Some believe that it could have come to Earth via comets and asteroids. Other model calculations have shown that transformation processes in the elements on Earth heralded the formation of water. Water can form from hydrogen under certain conditions, and this is present practically everywhere in the universe. This may have transfigured water, but where the first simple life forms came from remains an open question. Again, the asteroid and comet theory is the most popular. After all, life doesn't just happen, does it? The fact is that we still do not know how life originates or where it comes from. It is one of the great unsolved mysteries of creation. Complex living organisms are formed from carbon structures and, at least on Earth, metabolic processes are based on oxygen and certain minerals and nutrients. All of this could also have existed on Venus. Venus could have experienced a period in which it was an Earth-like world, but then this time passed, just as it will end on Earth at some point. There may even be more relics of life on the planet. This is exactly what some pictures of Soviet space travel taken in the 1970s and 80s, indicate. Aliens discovered on Venus Allegedly, the Soviet Union kept numerous images of the Venera mission secret, and these showed traces of extraterrestrial life. At least that's what Dr. Leonid Sanfomanidi claimed. Sanfomanidi was a renowned researcher and head of the Laboratory of Photometry and Thermal Radiometry at the Space Research Institute of the Russian Academy of Sciences. In 2012, 
He published a controversial paper in which several objects resembling living organisms were found in images taken by Venera 13. Dr. Sanfomalaiti examined entire series of images that had never been released to the public and presented curious readers with three objects that raised questions. The first object is a relatively large disk with a diameter of about 0.34 meters, which has a regular shape and was photographed on the surface of Venus. The second object resembles a black cloth, but could also be something like an alien life form. The third object is an apparition that resembles an insect or a scorpion. What do we know about Venus? So far, we know everything we know about our neighboring planet from observations with telescopes and numerous probes. It's difficult to study Venus because, as already mentioned, it is shrouded in a thick mantle of clouds. If you want to look at the surface from Earth, you won't have any luck. Unlike Mars, the surface of Venus was a well-kept secret until the Soviet Union became the first nation ever to land a probe on another planet and deliver images of the surface. The Americans also had their eye on Venus, and so they were the first to send a probe in the direction of the planet. On December 14, 1962, Mariner 2 passed Venus at a distance of 35,000 kilometers and sent data about the high temperatures, the dense cloud cover, and the unusual rotation. Since then, we have known Venus rotates very slowly on its axis and takes about 243 Earth days to complete a full revolution. This is longer than a year on Venus, which only lasts around 225 Earth days. This means that one Venus day is longer than one Venus year, which is really strange. In 1961, Venera 1 was the second probe to fly to Venus. The Soviet Union's Venus Premier reached the planet, but sent no signals. In 1966, Venera 3 was even supposed to land on Venus, but crashed on the surface of the planet. Despite the failure, the probe was the first man-made spacecraft to reach an alien planet. Venera 4 made it into the atmosphere of Venus in October 1974, and the probe sent signals to Earth until it landed. Things got really exciting from Venera 7 onwards. On December 15, 1970, the probe was the first probe to land undamaged on the surface of Venus and another planet. The capsule sent data of temperatures and atmospheric density for 23 minutes. On October 22, 1975, the time had come. For the first time in human history, we saw the surface of another planet. Venera 9 was equipped with cameras and delivered the first panoramic image of Venus. Millions of enthusiastic people marveled at the surface of a planet strewn with rocks, an infinitely vast landscape, but showing no signs of life. This was the beginning of a series of successes that culminated in the color panoramic images of Venera 13 and 14. In 1978, the USA emulated the successes of the Soviet Union and sent five probes to our neighbor on board Pioneer Venus 2. Pioneer Venus 1 was an orbiter that was the first to provide an exact profile of the surface. In 1985, the Soviet Vega 2 stopped by Venus on its way to Halley's Comet and set down the Vega 1 landing capsule. However, Vega 1 was unable to match the great success of the Venera mission. NASA's Magellan Research Probe was the last major Venus mission. It reached Venus in 1995 after a five-year flight to scan large parts of the planet with radar. The probe orbited its target more than 15,000 times and produced a detailed surface map. The sensations delivered by Venera 13 and 14. These images are still considered some of the best in the history of space travel. They were taken by Venera 13 and 14, two almost identical spacecraft that catapulted the Soviet Union into the Olympus of planetary exploration in the 1980s. The images were not only the first color images of the surface of another planet, but also the first high-resolution panoramic images and the best images of Venus that we have to date. For a long time, the series of images from the Venera missions were kept under lock and key by the Soviet Union. Only the most important data was published, and the successes were, of course, mainly shared for propaganda purposes in the 1980s. As a former space pioneer, the Soviet Union was crushed by the Apollo moon missions of the USA and had to set its own highlight. With the sensationally successful Venus missions, the nation restored its national pride and shone all over the world. The Venera 13 mission consisted of a propulsion probe, 
and an attached descent vehicle. The lander was a perfectly hermetically sealed pressure vessel containing the most important instruments and electronics. The probe, weighing around 760 kilograms, contained instruments for chemical and isotopic measurements, for monitoring the spectrum of scattered sunlight, and for recording electrical discharges during the descent phase through the atmosphere of Venus. Other instruments included an X-ray fluorescent spectrometer, an auger, a surface sampler, a dynamic penetrometer, an acoustic detector, and a seismometer to detect any tremors on the surface. The highlight, of course, was the aforementioned panoramic camera system placed at the heart of the probe, capturing light through a sophisticated raw system with mirrors on the outside and guided it safely to the protected camera on the inside. Remember, on Venus, we have a surface temperature of more than 400 degrees, a pressure far higher than on Earth, and corrosive gases in the atmosphere. Developing technology to withstand these conditions for even a few minutes was a feat of human engineering, and the Soviet probes lasted almost an hour on the surface. Venera 13 was launched on October 30, 1981, and after a four-month journey, the descent vehicle separated from the main probe to plunge into the atmosphere of Venus on March 1, 1982. The descent went like clockwork. The parachute was opened at an altitude of 47 kilometers, and the descent took about an hour. Venera 13 landed to the east of a plateau known as Phoebe Reggio. The area consists mainly of rocky outcrops and fine grained soil covered with rocks lying around. Immediately after landing, the panoramic image was taken and the mechanical drilling arm took a sample which was examined inside a protected chamber. Venera 13 sent an incredible 127 minutes of data and carried out investigations. Only 32 minutes had been planned, and you can imagine the joy in the Soviet Union at this success. Venera 14 delighted us once again with a fascinating image of the surface of Venus. Subscribe to the channel now. There are many more exciting videos to come.